Hey everybody, it's Karen. I had promised that I would do a video showing how to use the knockout technique using Sure Cuts A Lot. Using Sure Cuts A Lot, you can create a, an SVG file that you can then cut with any cutter, including bringing it into Design Space and cutting it with your Cricut Explorer. First thing I want to do is create some text and my text window is not displayed here on my screen anymore. So to get that back, I need to click Window and choose Library. And then it's often set as Shapes, but you just click the Fonts tab up here and then your fonts will be displayed. So I'm going to be using Impact Font because it's a nice, thick, sturdy font. It works really well for this technique. And I'm going to be typing in Man's Best Friend. just need to click on my mat and type it in and I'm doing it in all caps and I'm doing man's best on the first line and then I'm going to do friend on the second line so the amount of space that they take up isn't the same so I'm just going to do some adjusting I'm going to make the friend the word friend I'm going to have that space out a little bit differently than man's best to change that I'm going to increase my tracking that it's spread the word is spread out a bit more but I don't want it quite spread that much so I'm going to change that a little bit maybe this much okay and then I'm just going to choose my words and I'm going to make them larger because I want the whole thing to be larger than this maybe not quite as tall and then I'm going to take the word friend bring it closer and drag this out so that it's about the same width I think that looks pretty good. Then an important step in this, and trust me because I spent a little while trying to do this and it wasn't working, I couldn't figure it out. It's very important for you to take those two bits of text then and group them. Otherwise the technique won't work. Okay, so that's a very important step. Remember to group your two bits of text if you've got two lines of text. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace the image that I downloaded from the internet, which is a picture of a dog. And that's him right over here. I chose this one because it just turned out so nice. Okay, so that's quite large. I don't need him that big. So I'm going to make him smaller. He needs to fit within the text over here. And I'm going to change the color of the dog so that he's going to be easier to see. I'll change the fill. Let's make it yellow. It'd be very easy to see then. And then when you place it over here, you'll see that he's too large still. I'll bring him a little bit smaller. And he was a little slimmer. So let's do that. Just a little bit large. I want him to really fit within the text, including that one paw down there. A little tiny bit more. Okay. So there we go. It's a nice image of a dog and you want to make sure that your the image that you're going to be using to cut out the text is on top of the actual text. In other words, if you right click and choose a range, if he's not on top, just bring him to the front. You're going to know for sure that he's on top. Okay? If the text were on top, it would look different. You would see it on top. Just a second. I'll show you what that looks like. Bring to front. And now you see that the text is on top of the dog and you don't want that. So you can either choose the text and send it to the back or choose the dog and send him to the front. So I'm going to, I've got the text selected. So I'm going to send that to the back. And now you see the dog is on top. So with that done, I'm going to choose all of my items, my text and the dog. I'm going to right click and group. And the reason I group is so that when I create my second copy and I move it around, the dog the position of the dog won't change. So now to create my copy, I'm going to right click and copy and then right click and paste. And I'm going to drag <clears throat> that one out of the way. I'm going to ungroup both of them. Right click and ungroup. The same with this one. And again, if you don't do this, it won't work. Okay, so now I'm going to choose everything again. And I'm going to go up to my path menu 
for this portion, you're going to choose back minus front, which is this last option here. And now you see the shape of the dog has been cut out from all of the text here. Now this one, we're going to choose both items. We're going to go back up to the path menu. And now I'm going to choose intersection. Now you see that what's left is the shape of the dog in the letters. And so then you would bring that back over here. I'm going to zoom in so that it's a lot easier to see to line it up perfectly. And there you go. Oh, it's off by a little, little bit. Let's just bring this up to the same height as that. And if you zoom in more, it's a lot easier to see. So I'll just select this again and then just move it down a touch. There we go. That's lined up perfectly now. You see the top of the yellow is in the same line as the top of the gray. So that's lined up perfectly. And when you zoom back out, you'll see that you've got the shape of the dog on your words. So there's another thing that you can do. I'm going to undo a couple of steps. I'm just pressing Command Z on my Mac. I'm going to undo all of those parts. I'm going to zoom back out so that you'll be able to see better. And I'm going to select this dog over here. Whoops, he slipped a little bit, so I'll just press Command Z to undo that. I'm going to right click. I'm going to change his appearance. I'm going to make a shadow layer, but it's going to be an inset. And once you click that, it goes down to zero. You want to just move that up a notch, just slightly, and make him slightly smaller. But once you've done that, now you've got two dogs sitting here. You've got the yellow one, and you've got a gray one underneath. The gray one is slightly smaller. You want to make sure you don't move the gray one out of the position, because otherwise it won't fit exactly in the right places. So once you've moved the yellow one, just press delete and delete him. And then we go through the same steps again. I don't remember if this is grouped now. I'm going to ungroup it. I don't think this is grouped, but I'm going to check. It is grouped, so I'm going to ungroup all of this. And I'm going to bring this. See that happen again? So I'm just going to press Command Z to put the dog back in place. What happens is I click it and it just jumps out of spot out of the spot for a second. So I will right click and I will choose a range and bring him to the front to make sure he's on top of the text. And he is over here as well already. So I'll choose both of these pieces. I'm going to go to object and it was back minus front. So that removes the dog from here. And on this one, I'll choose both pieces, go up to path. Sorry. Uh, yes. Path. No, something's wrong here. So I need to double check. Ah, you see the two pieces of text are not grouped. That's what was grouped before. I should not have undone that. Okay, so now my dog moved again, pressing Command Z to put him back in place. I'm going to choose this piece of text. It moved slightly. And I'm going to choose this piece of text. And I'm going to right click. And I'm going to group them. So sorry to go through all of this, but if you're having problems with this not working, then it's important to know why it wouldn't work. So now the two lines of text are grouped. The dog moved again. <laughs> Press Command Z. I'm going to right click and bring him to the front. I know why he didn't come to the front. Let's try that again. Moved again. Command Z. Right click. Arrange and bring him to the front. Okay, if that doesn't want to seem to work, then send the text to the back. Okay, so that's worked now. So then I will draw a rectangle around all of my items, go up to path, and now I will choose intersection. And I've got only the part of my dog. And what's really cool about this now is that there will be just the slightest little bit of an offset there. When I zoom in, you'll see it better. If you like that look, that's very cool. So again, click your arrow to be able to move him again. And then 
move so that the offset is roughly equal all around. It's a little bit there off and there. I think that's good. Okay, see what a cool effect that is? So let's zoom back out. And you can see what that looks like. That's really, really cool. So I hope that's been helpful to you. Please, please, please subscribe to my channel. There are so many new videos coming up very soon. Um, and you don't want to miss any of these great tips and tricks. Thanks so much for watching.